Well, I had to stoke that fire this week. It's been pretty chilly. And I'm working on a chunk of wood that uh, I, I turned the other half of a few months ago. But this should be quite a nice piece on the inside. There's, there's uh, potential for a lot of activity in the grain. So I cut it down to size. I chose not to use the circle cutting jig this time because, and this might sound strange, but I wanted an intentionally off-balance piece. Because I got a new lathe. Oh yeah. And I just want to put it through its paces on its very first turn. Just to see how it does. Look at that beauty. That's a Powermatic 3520C. It's twice as heavy as my old jet. It's got twice the horsepower at two horsepower. It's got electronic controls which I'm testing right here just to see how how slow I can get this thing to go and, and how uh, at what point it starts bucking like the old jet used to. That jet would be bouncing across the shop right now just because it was uh, an old Reeves drive. I could only get it down to about 450 RPM. This is at about 250 right here. Without further ado, I want to give a special shout out to a few people. Randy Bybee, a close friend of mine here, who helped me with the heavy lifting when this thing got delivered to my driveway. He helped me get it in the shop and get it set up and I just can't thank you enough, Randy. Mike Benjamin. A source of constant good advice, knowledge. He helped me out a lot. Mike, I really appreciate it. I also want to thank uh, YouTube Wood Turners, Kim Tippin, and Billy Burt. You might not think you helped me a lot, but you did. And I sure appreciate it. I want to thank everybody else, and there's a long list of people, that just too many to name, that uh, offered advice on which lathe to, to look at, consider for purchase, uh, different brand names that I hadn't thought about. Uh, I appreciate all of your input. Now what I'm doing here is just uh, relieving some of the off-balance weight. I know the lathe can handle it. There's no sense uh, messing around with it anymore. So, just making things a little bit easier. As you can see, I was able to speed it up a little bit. I'm up around 800 right there. My intent with this bowl is uh, not to make it a natural edge bowl, but but to still include some bark on the final piece. And I'm also going to do something a little bit uh, maybe controversial, but I'm going to leave a little flat spot with chainsaw marks in it. Not the not where I just cut, of course, but uh, on the on the outer edge of the bowl. It's going to fit right in with the rustic look. That's my thinking. 
we'll see what y'all think of it at the end. I pretty much saturated all the bark with uh, very thin shellac. And that'll harden up nicely and keep it in place. Not that it's loose in any way. On the very top right there, I don't know if you saw the flat spot, that's where the chainsaw marks are. And it's time to look at what some of you have been up to out there. And I got some stickers in the mail. Mike, that sure is a pretty mahogany bowl right there. I love the highlights. Beautiful little resin pot here, too. Paul Dove, a lot of you might be familiar with, uh, makes some amazing things. This is from a 100-year-old piece of railroad timber. You can find him on Instagram. Trey is a fairly new turner, but i got to say, it looks like... Uh, Looks like old Trey's got some natural talent. These are really beautiful. Very well done. Nice highlights. Nice form. Way to go. If you haven't been there already, go check out Peggy at PF Woodturning on YouTube. She does some great work on the lathe. Louis Bandera does some great stuff too. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link up for all these. James Jordan, Blue Line Turnings. He's not on YouTube, but you can find him on Instagram at jamesjordan3217. And finally, David Adamson. You really need to go check out his channel. His channel name is David Adamson. He makes some amazing things. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank all of my subscribers at this time. I appreciate you so much. I'll just say this. Uh, and I really don't want any comments about it. But so many of you. So many of you. Reached out to me and just touched my heart. Over the past couple weeks. When I say I appreciate you, God knows, I mean it. You really, really helped me out. Thank you.
I only took the outside of the bowl up to 220 grit and then used the, uh, the thin shellac, the this, this same stuff. Uh, for the inside of the bowl, I did that and then I, uh, I took it up to 500 grit and then I applied the abrasive paste and polish from Axe. So the, the outside of the bowl feels a little bit rough. I mean, 2 220 grit is pretty smooth, but compared to the inside, which is up to 500 grit and then uh, polished super smooth, it feels like glass. It's a nice contrast. And here you can see that rustic look I was going for, and there's the flat spot coming around right there with the chainsaw marks. I like that a lot. I think it really adds to the piece. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. As for me, just like it says on the screen, I'm very blessed. I don't know that I deserve it, but I sure am grateful nonetheless. God bless and Semper Fi.